What we're going to be discussing today is pressure. Now, what is pressure fundamentally? The kinetic theory of gases helps us to answer this question. Let's imagine that we have a container over here, and as we know, a container of an ideal gas consists of many, many particles, all of which are moving at random speeds. Now, let's focus on one of those particles over here. And let's say that this particle, should we say that it's moving to the left and it's about to have a collision with the uh, side with the wall of the container and let's say that it has a speed v now after it rebounds backwards so i'm just going to draw that underneath but let's say that the particle is going to be moving the other way at exactly the same speed so let's say that it's moving at minus v so the same speed however the opposite velocity because in the upper case the the arrow is moving to the left and the lower case is moving to the right uh, what is the actual change of momentum of this particle well let's have a look so um, if we remember our change of momentum delta p is going to equal to the mass multiplied by the change in velocity of the particle so our change in velocity shall i just call that v2 minus v1 so final minus initial that's what this triangle stands for this is going to equal to the mass now our final velocity in this case well if we look at this this is actually minus v so we could just say minus v over here now our initial velocity is uh, actually v so we need to take away the initial velocity which is v so that turns into v like that which means that the change in momentum is going to be minus 2 mv okay well every time we have a change of momentum though so this was really our first step however our second step for our second step we'll need to remember that anytime we have a change in um, momentum that actually leads to a force it always leads to a to a net force this is what newton's second law tells us in fact it tells us that the net force is actually proportional to the rate of change of that momentum we know that our change of momentum is minus 2mv so let's say minus 2mv divided by delta t this force over here this net force is the force that the particle has experienced and this is really important so i'm just going to say over here that this is the force on the particle now the force on the wall due to newton's third law will actually be the opposite so this is equal to minus the force on the particle if you're wondering why that is the case well um, let's say that the net force on this particle here so there's a collision between the wall and the particle and um, if the wall is acting to with a force to the right so uh, this is the force on the particle from the wall well uh, then the force on the wall will be in the opposite direction to the left those two forces are going to be equal and opposite uh, this is what newton's third law tells us so we can just say that the force on the wall is equal to minus the force of the particles so that means that that minus sign from up there will disappear so it's going to equal to 2mv over delta t now pressure is actually going to be the sum of all of those individual forces divided by the area of the walls of the container so um, i can say that pressure is going to be the sum of all the forces on the wall divided by the area uh, mathematically this will be uh, all the the sums of all the forces so 
2 mv over delta t divided by all of those areas and uh, this is summing normally over the uh, the the m index uh, assuming that that they have uh, typical speeds okay folks well this is what uh, what what pressure is fundamentally um, hopefully this makes sense uh, if there are any questions please feel free to drop a comment down below and consider subscribing thank you